to focus in on. Who are you looking at? What is God saying to you today? And I want to encourage us today not to look at ourselves, but to look at God. And um, before I say anything, I want to welcome my brother. And uh, in, just a, um, in just a minute, he'll speak to us. Pastor Oliver, Olivia, Olivia. I, 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 I was going to try to pronounce the surname, and I know I may fail. So I don't know whether I should attempt it or I should Mayemba. Pastor Mayemba. Olivia, I got that. I, I got Mayemba right. Very correct. Please, for a minute, would you just come for a minute? Please welcome Pastor Oliver Mayemba. <laughs> Pastor Oliver, what is it that you do? Please hold on on that. Don't push that back. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, well, uh, professionally, I am a lecturer at City University. And I teach uh, actuarial science, AI, machine learning, everything just with one tool. I he uh, said AI. Okay, go on. <laughs> so he's, a, he's one of those guys. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but what happened, I joined City University doing a PhD. And during that time, things were very challenging. And I remember praying to the Lord, Lord, if you take me through this process, I'll sow my qualification into a kingdom business, especially reaching out to the Jews. And I actually remember saying, Lord, help me to lead 12 Jewish men to the Lord. The reason is because I'd, I'd read um, uh, Maurice Derulo's um, testimony where he said, when you are under attack and the devil is saying to you, you are a failure, you can't be a Christian, and all these things, find a scripture in the Bible and obey it. And God will appear. And I literally did that. And then he said, for example, especially uh, promise, uh, scriptures that have to do with Israel. So he, he gave an example and he said, you know, Psalm 122, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. There's a promise, and so forth and so forth. So I literally did that. I, I started praying for Israel. He said, if you don't know anyone, touch the map of Israel and pray. But because I'd worked in central banking, I knew the reverend of uh, Israel, the governor. So I started praying for them by name. Cut a long story short, God actually moved mightily, and I finished, and I got a job in the university. And, but as things went, I forgot my prayer. That I, and God is very humorous. Next to my office was a Jewish professor. And we started discussing, let's write papers together and so forth. And started telling me I can't do this on this day because I'm going to Israel for the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, Shabbat, and so I realized, oh, you're a Jew, yes. My, my prayer didn't come back. But one day, my students came to me to say, we can't attend your class on Friday evening because we will sin against God. So I said, how can you sin against God attending a class that is on timetable? They said, we are Jews. And your class overlaps with our Shabbat statue. So I said, okay. So they said, sorry, we can't attend. And these were like 15 students. And some had, you know, they put this keeper. And I, I didn't even realize that so many Jewish students in my, that point, at that point, my, the Holy Spirit brought back my prayer where I said, Lord, help, I'll show my qualification into you. Then I remembered, I said, I dismissed them, I said, go, come anytime, I can give you extra classes. And I had to repent. So I had to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Because I realized what God was saying, here they are. I got to, now, cut a long story short, God gave favor among the Jews. And I really mean that. In the university, I realized my boss, was a Jew, the dean of the business school. And I realized more professors were Jews. Then one of my students did very well. He got a first class. And then he would, I can help you get the funding for a PhD. Would you like to do a PhD? And you won't need to do a master's. He said, I'm sorry, sir. I can't take that. 
because my parents have arranged for me to go to a yeshiva in Israel. Yeshiva is like Jewish Bible school, you know, Judaism for Judaism. He said, I'm sorry, I can't do, and I've never had anyone refuse a scholarship for a PhD when I'm saying I will help you. I, I mean, it humbled me. Then I said, okay, if you, if you decide to come back and do the PhD, get in touch with me. The next time he got in touch with me, he was getting married. So he was inviting me to his wedding. And I said, are you sure? He said, yes. You know I'm a Christian? He said, yes. Did you tell your parents I'm a Christian? He said, yes. They want to meet you because you helped me to get a first class. And they are very proud of me. So I said, okay. So I went there. I didn't know. It, this is Orthodox Jews. I mean, where women sit on their own, the men on their own, and it's typical. So I got there, and I saw my students in this wedding chain, and I, I didn't know, and I saw my other students who were like his, his, his bride. So I was, I was hoping someone would come and talk to me. Then they arranged someone, a senior Jew, to, 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 to explain to me what was happening. Then this guy gave a gave One me more this. minute. I, one more minute. Okay. I need you, <laughs> I, I, because I know you're getting to the juice of it, <laughs> but I need to bring you in. Correct. Very quickly, this man, Edwin Shika, was an uncle to my student. So he explained to me, to cut a long story short, from that time we became very close. And he's the, right now he's the deputy vice president of the Board of Deputies of Real Jews. And from that time on, I got involved with the Jews. Went to his home, went to synagogue. As a result, I lead a ministry called Christian Watchmen of Zion, which is basically reaching out to the Jews in the UK and in Israel. And we need your prayers. And the point is the Jews are still as hard-hearted as during Jesus' time. They still are waiting for the Messiah. And they still actually think Christians are, you, they feel sorry for us because they say we misinterpret scripture. Jesus is not the Messiah. And so forth and so forth. So you can see where the need is. Now, however, one thing they have noticed is that what they can't resist is the fruit of the Spirit. If you love, they respond. Why? Because everywhere Jews are rejected, they are hated, United Nations, Middle East, but the moment they see genuine love, they respond. Mm. This is what has happened. And I think you remember, you made it good. So mm. this is where it's coming from. Okay. And then they now want to come and see how we worship. Because we visit synagogues, and they have said, we want to come to some of your churches and be part of your church. So this is where it came from. Okay. And so, and then next week, <laughs> Next week, we are getting from the deputy, vice president of board of deputies, one of the senior, what they call mitzvahs, the founder and chairman. Then we have some members of the board of deputies and uh, from the synagogue. So they are coming and they are very keen to meet you. I've, I've shared so they are coming next week to church. So we're having the Jews come over to church next week. And yes, they are coming to church and they're just to be part of the church. And okay. well, I think well, what I say to them is, just share who you are. What it is being a Jew. Okay. What hurts you? Because we tell them we love you. And if we love you, we need to know where it hurts. Yes, so I'm, going to, I'm going to bring it in. Because if not, you're a pastor. <laughs> and pastors will continue to preach. Okay. So please, let's um, make Pastor Oliver welcome. Thank you. So Pastor Oliver, um, myself, we had a... We spent time before lockdown. At that time, your wife was still with us. And unfortunately, during lockdown, your wife passed away. So our, our condolence for the loss of your wife. And, um, but you've maintained your passion for the Jews, for Jesus. And by the grace of God, we'll continue to have a great relationship with the Jews. I last week had a meeting with... Um, some Messianic Jews introduced to me, or Messianic Jew introduced to me by Jeff Letts, who's also a Messianic Jew. Some of you may know Jeff Letts. And um, we, we're, we're looking at um, how we ensure that Jews who are already Christians, because there's the, they're Christians and they're Jews, but in between are Messianic Jews. And the Messianic Jews are rejected by the Jews. 
And the we, they say these are Messianic Jews. They're either Christians or they're Jews. There's nothing about Messianic Jews because they're very, rege they reject Jesus as the Messiah. And um, what we, one of the things that the Messianic Jews are asking of us is let the church give a stronger platform to Messianic Jews because they know how to, how to reach out to the Jews in some sense better than we may know how to. So the, the series of conversations we're having about that. And yesterday I was in the ministry um, with some folks from Jericho, um, Jordan, sorry, from Jordan, and they want us to work together with them. They, they were showing us this was the river that Jesus actually got baptized in. This is where John the Baptist lived. This is, and so they want us to plan trips to Jordan um, for the purpose of ministry. We'll have another conversation about that later on. But there's a conversation to be had. I have never been to Israel like Pastor Tonya and uh, Aliezer, who just got back from Israel. Uh, I gather they had a great tourist expression, but also a spiritual encounter, I believe. Um, but we will talk about that another time. I know our guest speaker is revving to go and ready to go. Um, and he has been to Israel. But... Before we go further, I was given a message to, someone sent me this today, and he said, please, would you, you know, he felt a member of church. I wish Sean you were in church rather than tell me to do this, but I'm assuming you're watching online, so I'm just going to quickly do this. Sean, you should be in church, really. But the um, some of you might have noticed that there's a guy called Hughes who ran the nine point. 83 to break Christie's 30-year 100-meter record. You know, the, they broke the world record yesterday, I think, or was it yesterday or today? 24th, on the 24th. That was yesterday, is that correct? Yesterday. So, um, here he is. He's just beaten a 30-year record, 100 meters, by breaking it by 9.38. But I want to take a page out of his diary. In his diary, you had it show up there, put it back up. In his diary, he put Saturday, June 24th, competition day in New York. I am going to run, and he put half faith, 9.83. The slowest is 9.89 to 9.91. He said, I am prepared and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Watch God. And that is what he wrote before he ran the race. And after he wrote that in his diary, he ran and he broke a 30-year-old record. How many of you know that God deserves the glory right there? He put something down and believed by the grace of God. He wrote the vision, made it plain, and God gave him the victory. Folks, without further ado, let's make welcome the, our Father, Pastor Tunde Bakare, the overseer, minister, apostle of the citadel. God bless you, sir. Good to have you in the church. Hallelujah. What a joy to be here today. Thank you, Anita, for fulfilling your promise to be here. And I thank you all for showing up. It's not in our tradition to ever come to church late. We come earlier than other people. But I suffered today a great suffering. I already showed part of what I will share this morning with Pastor Nunes. And I walked till 1 a.m. getting the message ready. It's okay. What's the matter? Nothing. Okay getting the message ready, dotting my I's, crossing my T's, went to bed past one, and I woke up at seven in the morning to just pray, get ready. And God said, shut your notes. I want you to share something new, something I've not done before. So I'll be leading you to uncharted waters. I prayed it will be still waters. And that you and I will drink in the 
name of Jesus. And um, I want to thank you for your interest in the Jews. For many people who are misguided, they think Project 16 is just 16 position in government. Project 16 is reconciliation of the entire planet. What happened in Project 16 is Genesis 16, 1 to 16, where Ishmael was kicked out of the house uh, as a result of what happened in Genesis 16. And the Jews and the Muslims will never be in agreement until Abraham covenant is explained to them so that they know that the Arabs are partly Jew and partly Egyptians because it was Agar, the Egyptian, who conceived the seed of Abraham to give birth to Ishmael, who is the father of Muslims. Today, if there is any gang up against me in the northern part of Nigeria, it is because I was a Muslim who converted into Christianity. They are ready to deal with Christians who are born as Christians, but Muslims who converted, uh, they're ready, if need be, to get rid of them. But there's no way God's covenant with Abraham will not be fulfilled on this planet. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. There must be those who are willing and the anguish to go through and enforce that covenant from nation to nation. Who killed the Jew? Who killed Jesus Christ? Do you know? I can't hear you. I won't preach. Who killed Jesus Christ? Huh? Four major people are responsible. Huh? Is it Romans or Jews? Four major entities are responsible for the sacrifice of Jesus. Who killed Jesus? Number one, God. Number two, Herod. Number three, Pilate. And number four, the Gentiles and the Jews. Do you understand me? We are all guilty. But it was predetermined by God. And it would take people who are sensitive to God and his spirit to bring peace and reconciliation to the world. They are the ones who will understand out of one blood God made nations. And there's no room for racism, tribalism, blackism, or whiteism. There's nothing like that. God created you and I, and we are to enforce his peace all over the earth. Uh, I don't want to throw you into wondering where that came from. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 4, that's not in my note. I'm just keen into what the gentleman shared about his involvement with the Jews. Acts 4.27. Okay, I'm used to reading things from the screen. It's all right. Acts 4.27. Uh, thank you. Let us read together. For truly, against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, can you see them? Both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do what? To do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. God wrote the script. Herod, Pilate, Jews, and Gentiles play their own role. But they do not know that all the nations of the earth will come to worship before him. It was a setup. Can I hear? Amen? Amen. Don't hate the Jews. He will love them, God will love. He will curse them, God will curse. Don't hate the Jews. And don't despise the Gentiles either. Gentiles are people without God, without hope, without Christ in this world. You were there. I was there. I trust God that as a result of what we will hear today, we will be better equipped to take the battles to the gates of the enemy. Can I hear? Amen. Amen. 
it is not a very comfortable situation I found myself because I like to speak with authority and, and to be sure. But God wants me to be so assured today so that he can be the sure one. Can I hear amen? amen. My wife was shocked. I said, it's changed everything. And I couldn't even wait to shave. I just rushed into clothes and said, Bonesa, let us go. Uh-huh. Are you ready? Yes. I'm preaching a message, shall I say, from heaven or from God or inspired by God. I don't know how to put it this day, but I'll call it the manifestations of God and of his sons. Now the best title I could muster. The manifestations of God and of his sons. I'm seeing my children over there. I'm so excited about the at this race. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Stop playing football. I'm not talking to everybody, just to one person. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say with me the manifestations of God and of his sons. We have only one prayer to pray to open our understanding. For our eyes to see, our ears to hear, the vibrations of the Spirit, and our heart to understand that God has a purpose for manifesting himself. I trust God to be able to preach this the way it was downloaded in my heart. And I don't think it will stop here. I will continue to fine-tune it. You are getting the raw material this morning. Amen? And it's usually in the homes of true sons that this happened. Amen. Remember Paul called Timothy a faithful son. And it was in his letter to him that he first spoke about the great mystery of godliness. When sons are faithful, there's something that comes to them. There are those who follow you not because you're God, but because they trust the God in you. And there are those who will detest you because what you are doing and saying does not make sense to them. But they do not have enough gods to go to God and say, did you send this? Because if they will ask God, God will either be true and every man a liar. And we were coming in, I was listening to a message being preached by Pastor Biola. He said, don't judge people quickly because you do not know where they're coming from. Listen, I want you to pray with me, Colossians chapter 4. I'll read from verse 2. I've been through a lot of things in the past few days. I thank God for strength to pull through, regardless of what those who are close or far say about me. I know without a shadow of doubt that Nigeria will bounce back. That Nigeria will flourish again in my lifetime. I'm so bold to declare that Project 16 is alive and well. And no matter what happens, we will still see it materialize in our nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 4. I'll read from verse 2. Is a prayer. Colossians 4.2. It's a continuing earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God will open to us, what? A door for the word. A door for the word. People are looking for doors for breakthrough. This is a critical door. A door. A door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I'm also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. I'm talking about the manifestations of God and of his sons. And I want you to pray a prayer. Lord, open my eyes to see these things in your word, to see the practicality of how Christ manifested in the flesh, and to see how I'm supposed to manifest to be a blessing to my world. We just heard about a young man who wrote in his diary, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. On this day, this will happen. And it happened. And for God's sake, even if it did not happen, mm. even if it did not happen, God is still God, and that man is still a man of faith. We are quick to judge people. Uh, yes, you are so specific, some said to me. And yet, this is what we are getting. So was Jonah specific. In three days in heaven will be overthrown. But God will manifest in his sovereignty, he manifests in his own time. He sees everything, he does what he wills, and he will say, uh, wait a minute, Jonah, it's not time. I said to you, say three days, but I changed my mind. Because I will still do what I said through you, but they have repented now. And because of their repentance, I pull back, I relent. If you're not in tune with God, Jonah was a false prophet. But if you read the book of Nahum, the whole of Nineveh was eventually wiped out when they went back into idolatry. I want you to please pray for yourself before we go on. How long do we close service, sir? No more time. No more time, okay. No more time means when I finish. <laughs> that means your lunch will be at 3 p.m. today, okay. I want you to pray, Lord, open my eyes. Open my understanding. Deepen my understanding that everything I've gone through, you know about them. You know about everything that I've gone through and that all things will work together for my good in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether I'm understood or not, I'm here to do your will, O oh God. It is written in the volume of books. Reveal to me the things that I ought to do so that I might truly manifest Christ to my world. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Paul wrote a letter to Timothy, was telling him how to appoint bishops and deacons. And he made that to him as a presentation for how to behave himself in the house of God, which is the ground and the pillar of truth, and to round up his letter to Timothy, he wrote 1 Timothy 3.16. I want you to please be patient with me. You know it's uncharted waters. This is not a message I've mastered that I know very well. He pushed me along this line and he's been doing that all my life. He said, come and show you a bigger river. He will push me into it and I'll swim and I'll say, where? Then I become an authority. So follow me gradually. I hope I will make sense to you. First Timothy 3.16, ready? Read. And without controversy, hello. It means there's nothing you can say about it. Don't waste your time. Without controversy. If you are controversial, if you want controversy, you can take it elsewhere. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Don't take it away because there are so many things that happen when God manifested in the flesh. We know that God is spirit. Don't take that passage away, please. I'm coming back to it again and again and then we'll go from the manifestation of God who will go into the manifestation of his sons. What we are supposed to be as believers, as that person is running a race in America, trusting God for breakthrough, as that gentle professor reaching out to Jews, what are we supposed to be in the world, especially those of us who believe that Christ was born, Christ ministered here, Christ died according to scriptures, Christ was raised from the dead according to scriptures, and he was received into glory. What are we supposed to do? We are not just supposed to be Christians, sit down in church on Sunday, enjoy a good message from our pastor, and go live in the world. What are we supposed to do with all this equipment and all the, 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 the inputs we are getting from different sources, from men of God, from women of God? What are we supposed to do in return? God was manifested 
in the flesh. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men might become the sons of God. Say that with me. The Son of God. Son of God. Madam, you are not saying anything with me. You are looking at the cameraman. I say, say with me. Uh -huh. Stay here. Leave them alone. They are experts in their field. Okay? Say with me. The Son of God, the son of God. Became, the son of man became the Son of Man so that the sons of men might become the sons of God. It was an exchange that took place at Calvary. It was an exchange. Yes, exchange that took place at Calvary. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men might become the sons of God. A strong word was used by Paul. He said, great is the mystery of godliness. Great is a mystery. What's a mystery? A mystery is something that is hidden until it is revealed. A mystery is something that is hidden until it is revealed. How old is this mystery? At what point was Christ slain? If Satan had known, he would not have crossed into the Garden of Eden to deceive mankind. It was not an afterthought. In the book of Revelation, the Bible says, the Lamb of God was slain from before the foundation of the earth. So all the sins and, and multiplied sins that mankind will commit, God already, as you, I would like to put it, took a comprehensive insurance before the foundation of the earth and said, yes, I will create man in my image and after my likeness. I know that I will say, don't do this, but he will go do it. But no matter what he did and what the enemy will do thereafter, I'm going to bring them back to me. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you daily visit him? You have created him a little lower than the angels that Elohim and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Lamentations chapter 5 says, the crown is removed from our heads because we have sinned. But we are getting better crowns back. I'm not sure you got that. We are going to wear the crown of righteousness. The crown of all those crowns are coming back because of what God did. Give me 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. How old was this package, this, this manifestation? How long ago did God think about it? So that we can be redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. It was done. It was preordained. He indeed, are you with me? He indeed was foreordained when? Before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in these last times for you. Who through him believing God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Lift up your hand and say with me, my confidence, my hope, and my faith, they are in God. He's figured out everything. He's asking us to do a finished work. He has finished the work before he asks us to now come and start what he has finished. Can I hear? Amen? Amen. Now, give me back 1 Timothy 3.16. Let's see some things there. The different things that happen when God manifested in the flesh. Do you remember the subject of our contemplation today? The manifestations of God and of his sons. It will be such a painful thing for God to manifest and for you not to manifest. And with our controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And what is that mystery? God manifested in the flesh. What are the things that happen when he manifested in the flesh? Number one, he was justified in the spirit. In Luke chapter 4, I think, verses 21 and 22, uh, I think so, he came to be baptized. Is it Luke 4? 
Let me check my Bible. I think it's Luke chapter 2 or 3. Let me find out exact place. I've told you we are going through uncharted waters, didn't I? Okay, it's Luke chapter 3, 21 and 22. Luke chapter 3, 21 and 22. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And when he, while he prayed, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. The moment he manifested in the flesh, he was justified in the spirit. But do you know how long it took for him to be justified in the spirit? 30 years. Because he did not step into River Jordan, apart from Simeon, apart from the other prophetess, Isaiah Anna, who knew about his birth. Nobody knew. There were only two, three people who knew. Okay? He was justified in the spirit when on the day of his baptism, God spoke, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Go back to 1 Timothy 3.16. He was not only justified in the spirit, he was also seen by angels. Am I, am, I, am I boring you? He was seen by angels. You do not know that before God manifested in the flesh, no angel ever saw him. No man had ever seen him. They will see his type and shadow. He will come in different shapes. He appeared to Abraham one way. He appeared to Moses another way. He spoke through the fathers in diverse ways. But no man had ever seen God, no angel. Jesus said so. In fact, Jesus almost confounded me until I got a, a, a kind of you know, until I got some revelation when he said before Nicodemus, he said, no man has ever ascended to heaven at any time. And I've read my Bible. I began to ask questions. How about Enoch? How about Elijah? He said, no man has ever ascended to heaven at any time except the son of man who came from heaven and who now is in heaven. I raised questions there. And many of you just, many of us, not many of you, we just read our Bible and whatever is there is fine. Just help us. We prefer Psalm 23 and Psalm 91. That's all. Give me this day our daily bread. And make sure you protect me. Lead me by still waters. Make sure I dwell in your secret place that when I'm playing football, my hand will not break. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But Jesus meant every word. Truly, nobody had ever ascended to heaven at any time. God took him. That's all he said. He said, he walked with God and God took him. He was found no more. It's the same way you and I will be taken. Oh gosh. It was a whirlwind that carried Elijah to heaven. But Jesus ascended by himself. I said no angel ever saw him. Can I give you reference? Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and his trail filled the temple. And there were angels in the throne room. What did they do? They had six wings. With two wings, they covered their eyes. With two wings, they covered their feet. And with two wings, they were flying. And every time they were crying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Hello? The whole earth is full of your glory. They covered their eyes because they could not open their eyes to see him. He was dwelling in the midst of unapproachable light. The first time angels saw God was when he was born. When he was born. He will give command to them, they will hear him, 
He will tell Gabriel, go do this. He will tell Michael, go do that. But to see him face to face was impossible because of unapproachable light. That's why it's called the blessed and only potentate. The only sovereign who manifests in his time. Are you with me? And so when he was born, you know the story in Luke chapter 2, don't you? Angels told shepherds that you would go and see a baby that was born and being held in swaddling cloths. And you will see that an angels came and were singing peace on earth or in heaven. It was in heaven. Peace in heaven. And, and to all men of goodwill on the earth, peace also. The shepherds ran. They found the baby. They spread the joy. For the first time, you were seeing God in flesh. Now, please pay attention if you are going to manifest like the Lord. How did the word become flesh? Because if you don't follow that, you will not see how you can manifest also. Names will be names. Turn day will be turn day. Light day will be light day. But the day is coming when we'll appear in another form. It will be still us, but it will be God walking in us and through us. We will yield a, a sacrifices and offering. Jesus said, you will not receive. A body you have prepared me. I've come to do your will, O God. It is written in the volume of books. How did he become flesh? Are you interested? Was it magic? No. You find about two or three in the beginnings in the Bible. The first one is Genesis. I'm going through uncharted waters. You have to follow me as the Spirit directs me. That's why I shut down everything just to flow in the Spirit. In Genesis chapter 1, Moses wrote, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes or no? The earth was void without form and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Yes or no? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. How did Moses know the story of the creation of the heaven and the earth that took place before he was born? Are you with me? How did he know? How could he write so authoritatively about something that took place long before he was born? He was born in Exodus chapter 2. Now he was writing accurately about Genesis chapter 1. He had an encounter with God in Exodus and said, show me your glory. And God said, ah, Moses, only dead men can see my face. Mm. You are asking for a very hard thing. But I will do this for you. Here is a place by me. What is that place? It's a rock. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. And I will pass before you and you will see my behind. You will see my back. He used back. God is spirit. is not flesh. He has no back. He said, I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. You are going to see what I did in the past so that you will know that I'm able to do what I'm saying now and what I will do in the future. And as soon as he hid him, like you press an icon in your computer, everything God did in the past was downloaded into his heart and he began to write. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void without form. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said that there be light, there was light. Every time God created, there was a spoken word. I can show you at least six, seven times in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and it happened. 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 Over and over again is by the spoken word. Is that clear? So, after that time that Moses wrote, in our day after Christ had manifested, we needed someone to connect us with that. So, John the Beloved gave us 
a summary of the creation story. How did he start his work? John 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then he said, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and we beheld his glory full of grace, and truth. John, what do you mean the world became flesh? He returned, he said, the reason he became flesh is so that we can touch him, we can feel him, we can see him. Give me First John chapter 1. You will see another beginning there. So you will find almost in the entire Bible three in the beginnings. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the world, the world was with God, and the world was God. The world became flesh and dwelt among us. And then, is this John 1.1? 1, 1? No, give me 1 John. 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. The reason he manifested is so that we could hold him. We could feel him. The woman with the issue of blood could touch the hem of his garment. The lepers could be cleansed by his spoken word. The blind could see. The lame could walk. He manifested to show us what manner of people we ought to be if we are not falling. And he demonstrated it on the Mount of Transfiguration when he manifested before them in that same unapproachable light and they could not, they said, his garment was whiter than what any dry cleaner could ever do. And God spoke again, this is my beloved son in whom I well pleased. Hear ye him. Now here we go. That which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life do you understand me so far how did the world become flesh huh? how did it become flesh we have seen in the beginning god created the heavens but how did he really become flesh can i show you you want to see it was it magic if they ask you, you must have hope. You must be able to explain it. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is established. How did the world become flesh? You've read the account of Luke the physician in his treatise. When he wrote that treatise, he began to explain how the world became flesh. Can I take you through it? Angel Gabriel appeared in the house of Mary the Virgin. Mary the Virgin was not conscious that day of the prophecy of Isaiah that the virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child and shall call it Emmanuel. I'm not sure Mary was conscious that day of the prophecy of Ezekiel that a woman shall encompass a man. But that day, Angel Gabriel showed up in Mary's bedroom and said, Hail Mary, blessed are thou amongst women. She was immediately uh, frightened. She said, Do not be afraid. You had favor with God and with men. You are going to conceive and you bring forth a child and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will save the people from their sins. Gabriel spoke that to Mary. Now, remember, Mary was in some kind of, uh, I don't know whether it's courtship, but it was betrothed to Joseph. And she stood with all her simplicity, sincerity, and purity and said, Hey, you must have a wrong address. I do not know a man. How can this be? He said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. And that child you'll be carrying in your womb be called the Son of the Greatest. She was still in awe. Using the little brain you have, to figure out how God will do what he wants to do for you. 
By the time the angel finishes, he said, okay, it takes people in the same fellowship to strengthen and encourage themselves. I want to give you a fellowship member. You know Elizabeth? Elizabeth is now six months pregnant. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Immediately the angel left. Mary did not wait. She joined fellowship. She went uphill because they have been praying all their lives for Auntie Elizabeth. Like one of the pastors yesterday came to me. Our brother, the former dean, he came with his wife. He said, I want you to pray. My daughter is barren. I want you to pray that she conceives. And I stretched back into the past. And I said, Lord, you did it before. You've said none of you shall be barren. We lay hold of that word. And Lord, let the daughter conceive and bring forth. The moment they said amen, settled in heaven. You say, how can that be? Mary got to the house of Elizabeth. Mary did not go for pregnancy test. Mary simply said to Gabriel, be it unto me according to your word. And the moment she released her faith, the word took on flesh on the inside of her without her egg, without any human seed. A womb became just a place, incubator, for God to be incubated. When she said, be it unto me, according to your word. Then she ran to the house of Elizabeth. As soon as she stepped into the threshold of her house, she said, what is the mother of my Lord doing in my house? As soon as I heard the salutation of your words, the baby leaped in my joy, in my womb. Blessed is she who believes, for there shall be a performance of every word that the mouth of the Lord has spoken. How did the word become flesh? Because somebody believed the word. Amen. No matter the doubters around you, just walk away from them. No matter who they are, whether close or far, walk away because they are about to stab the baby you carry. Don't allow them, and usually the devil will use those who are closest to you as he used the wife of Job. He will use those who are closest to you to stop. But shake them off, press on, and when the food is cooked, invite them to eat. Like Joseph did to his brothers. Do you understand this? And that's why I remain strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I know what he had said, and I'm not going to, at this stage of my life, begin to doubt, no matter the circumstances or situation. Can I hear amen? Do you now understand how the world became flesh? Yeah. Is it clear to you? Someone believed the word. And God said, now that I have someone who believed, pew, was born as a baby in swaddling clothes in a manger. And angels came and sang. Shepherds saw. And the child began to grow. Can you imagine that this mystery is great? That God became flesh. God who is spirit. How can you conceive it? How can you conceive it? Now, it's okay for angels to manifest who relate with them. Uh, because we have read about it. And it doesn't frighten us that angels manifested and spoke more to Manoah. And spoke to, to uh, an angel manifested and spoke to who again? The first person I saw the angel speaking to was, of all people, sir. Agar. And he brought the name of Ishmael from heaven. Be careful how you handle the things of God. You cannot wish Ishmael away. Just as God gave 12 sons to Jacob, he gave 12 princes to Ishmael. And he said, because you are Abraham's seed also, I'll make you great. Be careful. Don't be on the side of those who want to scatter and divide through religious bigotry. Be among those who will yield to God and bring peace and reconciliation to the earth. Can I hear amen? amen. Now, big question. What 
the Jesus or the, the world, what did they manifest to do? That's one of them. There are four things, four principal reasons why he manifested. Number one, he manifested to show us the love of the Father. He manifested to show us how much God loves us. Give me Romans chapter 5, and let me read from verse 5 to 6. Romans 5, 5 to 6. Thank you. Romans 5, 5 to 6. Okay. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Next verse. For when we are still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Go on. For scarcely for a righteous man we won't die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates what? His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If you ever become a Christian because of your good deeds and because of your good looks, you are a counterfeit. Wow. You're not a Christian. While we were still sinners, God demonstrates his love towards us. Christ died for us. First John chapter 1, First John chapter 3. Behold what manner of love. The Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Ha! That we should be called the sons of God. It, yet, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when he reveals himself in you and to you, you become like him. Are you with me? And he who keeps his hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. The first reason he manifested is so that he would demonstrate God's love for us. The second reason he manifested, Pastor names, is so that he would take away our sins. First John chapter 3. First John chapter number 3. I shut down my note and everything, so I have to figure it out. First John 3, verses 4 and 5. First John 3, 4 and 5. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Next verse. And you know that he was manifested to do what? To take a with him. There is no sin. Do you know that there is no sin on earth powerful enough to take man back to hell except unbelief? When he took that cup in his hand and drank it and said, It is finished. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He came here. He manifested to take away our sins. Now, if you put the car before the horse, you will say he manifested to destroy the works of the devil. No, 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 no. It's after he has taken away our sins that we can stand and say, here comes the prince of this world. He finds nothing in me because there's nothing to latch onto in me. He manifested to demonstrate his father's love to us. While we're yes sinners, he died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He did not come to the world to condemn the world. He came so that the world might be saved. Those who do not believe are condemned already. Number two, he manifested to take away our sins. So if there's any area of struggle, pain, rebellion, just come to him the way you are. Say, I can't fix it. That's why you came. I can't handle it by myself. Take it away from me, Lord. Because he nailed all the ordinances against you to his cross. Forever. Forever. 
Are you with me? And number three, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy all the works of the devil. I sat here today and I was looking at destroying sin, destroying sickness, destroying poverty. Do you understand that God is a family man? Do you understand that God has a family in heaven and on earth? Do you understand that he's not partial to one and impartial to the other? Yes. I demonstrated this in the church that I'm privileged to pastor many weeks ago, or two Sundays ago. I called my son and my daughter to come forward and to testify. When you were living in England, was your lifestyle different from those living when you were living in Nigeria? I said, no. When you lived in America, is your lifestyle, was it different? He said, no. When you returned to your Nigeria, is your life different? They said, no. Why? Because you have a father who can provide at every place where you are. If God has families in heaven and on earth, why do you think those on earth should be bound by sin, bound by sickness, bound by disease? My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. There's no room for sickness or disease in my life because the Father who has a family in heaven has a family on earth and he takes care of both of them. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Are you ready for the fourth one? This will jolt you. The reason he manifested and all to the entire world, to individuals, was so that once he will manifest himself to them, they can then manifest him to the world. Amen. That's why it is foolish to embrace religion instead of relationship with God. That's why it is stupid to, to, to just come to church and say, I go to Freedom's Ark, I go to the Citadel, I go to Victory Church, I go to this place. No, 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 no. They personally revealed to you. I remember my second daughter several years ago in the UK. She began to scream. I've seen him. I've seen him. I've seen him. Why did you not show him to me? I said, what have we been showing to you? The word has been preached so that it can become flesh. So that you can, I mean, latch your faith onto what you are hearing and say, Lord, if you have revealed yourself to others, I need you to reveal yourself to me. I need a personal knowledge and revelation of you. Not what he said, they said, she said. I need a personal revelation of you to me. Because if it does not manifest himself to you, you cannot manifest him to the world. The book of John. Same John. John chapter number 14, beginning from verse 19. I hope I'm making sense to you. John 14, 19. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. That's a place to say amen, Lord. <laughs> because I live, you will live also. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. God, because I know. He holds my future. My life is worth a living just because if because I live, you will live also. Next verse. At that day you will know that I am in my father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Apart from the world becoming flesh, to demonstrate God's love for us, to take away our sins, to destroy the works of the devil, this 
is one of the major reasons he came to manifest himself to me and to you. And how would he do that? Let's read on. Judas, not his chariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Listen to him. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. If you have read John chapter 14 from the beginning, you will now understand what Jesus meant when he said, in my father's house. There are many mansions there. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And some religious folks will tell you that is in heaven. In my father's house. There are many mansions there. In my father's house, above. There's no above there. Ebenezer will be put above there. There's no above. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. The word mansions there is meno. There are many dimensions of God on the inside of me. In my father's house are many dimensions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I'm going to the cross. I wasn't going to heaven. Jesus is not Julius Bagger. He's not building mansions for you in heaven. His mansions are on the earth. That's difficult for you to believe. You are God's mansion. I am God's mansion. He wants to manifest through us on the face of the earth. Foxes, okay, there we go. <laughs> Foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. No one is opening his heart saying, Come in, Lord Jesus, and dwell here. He said, In my Father's house, there are many mansions there. If it was not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when he got to the cross, bam, he was pierced, he was open. The one who is the foremost apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, everything that was in Christ was made available to us. Do you understand? And one of them said to him in John 14, Master, show us the Father. And that will satisfy us. Where you are going, we don't know. We don't know this, you are going, you are coming. But show us the Father. And he looked at him and said, Philip, I've been with you for this long. And you are still asking me the Father. Don't you know that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father? Because the Father, Menos, dwells in me. I am the Father's house. May I ask you a question? Was it Christ himself that was reconciling the world to himself? No. Second Corinthians chapter 5. God was in Christ reconciling himself, the world to himself, and is making you ambassadors not to go do the work of reconciliation, but to announce the word of reconciliation, that that job is already done. God wants you to become his house. That's why he manifests himself to you. So what are the four answers to the question I asked? Why did he manifest himself? I want you to remember them from this day forward. Number one, to demonstrate his love to us. Number two, to take away our sins. Number three, to destroy the works of the devil. And number four, to manifest himself to us so that we become his house the house it dwells in. So that if anybody is looking for the address of Jesus and you show up, Jesus is there. Do you understand this? Do you believe that? Uh, your answer shows me you don't. Do you really believe? You cannot believe until he manifests himself to you. Can I quickly show you? John chapter 1, he came to his own. His own received him not. But as many as believed in him, to them he gave power to become what? Sons of God, to become just like him. They are not born after the will of the flesh. They are not born after the will of man. They are not born after the will of blood. They are born after the will of the Holy Ghost. In that way, in this life you have no choice anymore. You have no single choice. Don't let anyone deceive you. The only reason you are giving your will as a moral agent is to choose his will. 
Life and death I present before you. I present to you today life and death, blessing and cursing. Do you have a part to choose curse? No, he said, choose life. The only way you can survive here is to use your will to choose his will. You have no choice to just do what you please. You are bought with a price. Bought with a price. Is that clear? It will make our abode in you. Is this clear? Now we have heard about the manifestation of God. How about the manifestations of his sons? Are we ever going to manifest or we just be going about and declaring we are Christians? When nations of the earth respond to you, I'm going to give you four answers for that also so that you see it in scriptures why he manifested so that we also can manifest. Number one, it is only those who receive Christ as Lord and Savior that are the sons of God. They can be members of the church, they can be there for life, but they do not become sons of God until they receive Christ. To be honest with you, they are not even part of the church except they have received Christ as Lord and Savior. He came to his own, his own received him not, but for as many as received him, he gave them power to become just like him, to become sons of God. They are not born after the will of the flesh, not born after the will of man, they are not born after the will of the blood, they are born after the will of God. It's only those who receive Christ that are the sons of God. Question, are you a son of God? Is the Spirit of God bearing witness with your spirit that you are truly His? That takes me to number two. It is to those whom Christ has manifested that can manifest him to others. John 14, 21, and then John 17, 1 to 8. In John 14, 21, quickly, John 14, 21, he who has my commandment and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So if Christ has manifested himself to Pastor Nims, what is Pastor Nims supposed to do? John 17. John 17, beginning from verse 1. we we'll read up to verse 8. And you will see that before Jesus said, it is finished on the cross, he stood before God, he said, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Long before he got to the cross. Here we go. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over our flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the true God, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. It is to those he manifests that can know that. Now, eternal life is not life in eternity. Hello? Yes, sir. That's the limitation we put on it. Life in eternity. No, eternal life that you know the only true God and Jesus will be ascended. Next verse. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. What work? Was he at the cross here? He's not gone to the cross. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. What work? Next line. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. That's the real thing. The name of the Lord is a high tower. The righteous run into it and they say, he didn't leave wealth for us, did he? Did he promise gold mine for you? Did he leave wealth for you in Australia? In, in uh, where is the country? Switzerland? He didn't leave land, large acres of land for you? He left only one thing, his name. Everything you are looking for is in that name. If you have right relationship with that name, there's nothing that can be kept away from you. 
It doesn't matter what the enemy has stolen from you. He will restore back sevenfold. You will not be able to account for it because you know the name. You know the name of Jesus and you reverence that name and that name is working in you and through you. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. Verse 8, for I have given them what? The words which you have given me and they have received them. And I've known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. End of story. I manifested, he came, he manifests himself to you, he manifests the name of his father to you, so that you will do what? Are you following me so far? So that you will manifest him. Get me my diffuser. I tried to look for an electric diffuser today that will work immediately. Everybody knows that diffuser. Yeah. Do you put this in your house? What does it do? It sends everything. It changes the air around your house. If you have just eaten bad food that is smelling and you put on the diffuser, it diffuses and then the bad air is out. The fresh one is come and you're smelling it and you're happy, your home is cool and it's smelling fresh. Do you know the reason Christ manifested himself to you is that you become a, diff a diffuser? But everywhere you go, you change the atmosphere. Everywhere you step into, you diffuse whatever is evil there and brings light, love, illumination into the environment. The reason he manifested himself to you is so that you become a diffuser, diffusing the knowledge of Christ to everyone in your territory of influence. Have you noticed that if a bad joke is going and everybody is laughing and somebody steps in, they change the topic. It's a diffuser. If you are among the wicked and, and you are enjoying their wickedness, you are not a diffuser. Yeah. He manifested himself to you so that you can manifest him to the world yeah. as a diffuser. Let's look it in the world. Second Corinthians chapter number 2. I'll read from verse 12 to 17, Second Corinthians. I'm going to repeat this message, if need be, in church next Sunday, because I'm, I'm getting so much out of it that I thought I knew. And this, it just directed me this morning. Okay, here we go. Furthermore, when I came to church to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened to me by the... Who opened the door? Who opened the door? I can't hear you. A door was opened to me by the Lord. Remember the prayer we prayed at the beginning. That the door of the word might be opened to us. So that we are able to articulate the mysteries of Christ to other people. He came to trust. The Lord opened a door to him. What did he do? I had no rest in my spirit. Because I did not find Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them... I departed from Macedonia. The Lord opened the door. But he had no peace in his spirit. He knew, uh-uh. This is a test from God. That though I opened the door, I want to check whether you are led by the spirit or by opportunity. We are not led by opportunity. We are led by the spirit of the living God. If you don't find peace, stop it there. So he left the place. And he said, as a result of his obedience, see what happens. Next verse. Now thanks be to God who always leads us how? In triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Please check the word diffuses in your Bible. You will see annotation there that takes you to the middle of your Bible. Say, manifest the fragrance of his knowledge everywhere. Tell your neighbor you are a diffuser of Christ. Everywhere you go, you are supposed to diffuse. 
the fragrance of his knowledge everywhere, 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 regardless of all the attacks against your person, the pressure will only bring out the fragrance of Christ. The fragrance of Christ. When you know you're a diffuser, you know definitely messy things cannot hang around you. They will be dispelled by what is coming from the fragrance of Christ. But guess what? This is why many people die and this is why many people leave. Because if they do not receive what is coming from that diffuser and they are against it, it can quench everything they carry. Here we go. Now thanks be to God. For we are to God, go on, for we are to God, the fragrance of Christ among those who have been saved, among those who are perishing. Can you imagine what we are to both sides? Wow. Those who have been saved, we hail it and say, Wow, we can see Christ in you. You didn't even have to preach. It's called lifestyle, lifestyle evangelism. Yeah. The way you carry yourself, the way you conduct your affairs, the way you choose your words, the way you do your things. They may not understand you, but they know there's something definite about you. The fragrance to those who are perishing, to those who are living. Next line. To the one where the aroma of death leading to death. And to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? Conclusion. For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. For as long as you are conscious of the presence of God in your life, regardless of what happens, just keep on diffusing the fragrance of his knowledge. Can I hear amen? amen? The reason he manifests himself to you is so that you become God's diffuser. And this is where I'm closing, Pastor Names. I pray every now, one more point. I pray everyone who is receiving this will understand why we do the things we do. God wants these agents of change, these diffusers that he has manifested himself to. Yeah. To go manifest him to others. He wants them on the social, economic, and political platforms and the seven mountains of culture of nations so that they can drive the pigs away and stop corruption dead in his tracks. Because the whole earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That the whole creation might be delivered from the bondage of corruption and brought into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. We are change agents. There's nothing you can say about us. We know what our assignment is. The corrupt can gang up together. They can do all that they will. At the end of the day, it is the counsel of the Lord that will stand as the sovereign God manifests himself in his own time through us. We are change agents in the social, economic, political climate of the world, regardless of what the world has to say. We are taking back everything that mankind lost to the devil. We are restorers. We are taking everything back in the name of Jesus. Romans chapter number 8. Let's read it together as we close. Romans 8. I pray this will bless you and change your perception from this day forward. Romans 8, 18 to 21. My last scripture for today. For I consider... That the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. If you read that in the KJV, it says, For the manifestation of the sons of God. Go on. For the creation was subjected to futility. Not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God to whom Christ has manifested and who now has the power, the grace, and the ability to manifest Christ to others and manifest the fragrance of his knowledge. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of God as the waters covers the sea. The manifestations of God and of his sons. Thank you for listening. Wow. Wow. What a word.
um, Pastor. Thank you. Saints, I, I, I want you to listen to this before we all leave. Um, we are here to manifest. Not ourselves. Quite often we try to manifest ourselves. We get up in the morning and we make up and we look in the mirror. And if we like what we see in the mirror, then we step out because we think we look good. But the mirror that we have been given to look at is what? The word. You cannot manifest God if you are not looking at the right image. And he has given us his word to mirror back what we are meant to manifest around us. The word today is clear. And I pray that as we have understood where to manifest the love of God. <laughs> because Jesus, he said, as my father sent me, so send I you. So we are to manifest the love of God. We are to manifest the one who has taken away the sins of the world. We are to manifest the fact that the works of the devil has been defeated. Then we are to manifest the same way he reveals himself in us. He, Paul says, follow me. As I do what? Follow Christ. Folks, if our life is not emulating the life of Christ for others to emulate, then we're not manifesting God. The word today has challenged me. We've been speaking about divine order and living in alignment with God's purpose. And today I just feel so called to just come before God and say, Father, forgive me where I have failed to manifest you. Because it's easy to get the word, but the question is, have we gone before God to say, Father, we have not manifested the word. We've not mirrored the word. We've not allowed this word to be us. We've not gone to companions of faith to encourage our faith. And we have hung around those and because we have failed to diffuse the knowledge of God, their stench has come upon us. We have received the stench of the world because we have failed to manifest the knowledge of God. You see, when we don't allow the knowledge of God's word show up where we are, then guess what will prevail? The words of others. And I pray in the name of Jesus, according to what we have heard today, we will not allow the world's uh, scent to stick onto us. Because it's clear that God is giving us a word and a new and a fresh word. You're called to make a difference. You're called to make a difference. What do people smell when they're around you? What do people smell when they are around you? All the perfumes of the world cannot remove the stench of the world if you don't have the glory of God on your life. This word is challenging me as I'm speaking. It's just... The Bible says, dead flies putrefy 
the ointment of the perfumer. A dead fly in the perfumer's ointment causes it to give a foul odor. And it says, so it is for a person who is reputable for good things, a little foolishness. May God help us that acts of foolishness, stupidity, sin will not be found in what was pure so that we don't give a foul odor. Let us pray. Auntie Lady, I rarely do this. I'll ask you to come and pray for us. You have drank from the wells for so long and I know that there is a deposit in your spirit. Can I ask you to pray for us? Please welcome Pastor Auntie Sister Lady Beth. Father, we thank you for your word. It is fresh, it is living. We are not to be excited by the word. We are to drink the word, soak it into our spirit. And we are to live it out every day of our lives. Father, we ask that you help us. Of ourselves, we cannot do what is right before you, except your spirit comes within us to help us. We have taken in the word today, O oh God. Some of us have seen our foolishness. Some of us know where we are and where we ought to be. Lord, take us to the next level in Jesus' name. Amen. And when men see us, let them see your glory in us and through us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the standard of your word be a mirror unto us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your servants that you have used. Replenish him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said this message is new to him. But, Lord, you are building line upon line, line upon line in his life. Take him to that place, Lord, Amen. where it is called finish. Help us, each one of us, Lord, and those that we hear this message, that, Lord, Everywhere we go, we will bring your aroma, will diffuse every negative aroma in the name of Jesus. Because there is the aroma that leads unto death, and there is the aroma that leads to life. Let us always carry that aroma and diffuse that aroma which leads to life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. As we close, this is our opportunity to minister back to Pastor Bakary and also to receive our tithes and offerings. If you're giving and you need an envelope, please receive the envelopes now. Um, ushers, please go around different sections as quickly as possible. Please need an envelope. And those of you giving online, please, it should be showing up online. And um, if you're, the Bible tells us, and you know in this house, those who minister spiritual things, we minister our carnal things. Whilst we receive our tithes and offerings, we also will be sowing a gift into the life and ministry of Pastor Tunde Bakri. Never because he asks, never ever because, and uh, not because he needs I remember I was at a meeting yesterday when we were celebrating the life of my former pastor, the man who ordained me in the ministry, Pastor Michael Bassett. And um, uh, uh, Archbishop Duncan Williams was there. Amongst many things he said, one of the things he said, he said he met Dr. Bakery when he was a lawyer. He said, and when he was a lawyer... Before he became in the ministry, he was already a very, very rich lawyer. And that the amount of money you needed to pay even just to see him was quite high. And that he came into ministry not because he needed money, 
but he brought money into ministry. So I remember interviewing Dr. Bakary. There are many phases of my life. So some of you, I'm a junior, I was a journalist at one time. A few. So I interviewed him. Yeah, Dr. Bakary remembers the newspaper, Black Britain. So I interviewed him, and my, my, I, I think the title of it, I'm going to try to remember, was he was, before I became a pastor, I was a millionaire. Before I became a pastor, I was a millionaire, because he made, he was a millionaire as a lawyer. So I was just quite the Muslim, the Muslim millionaire turned pastor, you see? So that, that so the, he was, but you, yeah, you were a millionaire as a Christian before you became a Muslim. Yes. You were, yes. The Muslim turned Christian, yeah, became a millionaire. Yeah, I, it was, and it was a very good write-up, though I say so myself. Um, I mean, look, I would. I was a journalist. So it was, it was, I, I, I used to write every week. I had two pages, no, three pages. And I gave a two-page spread with him in the middle page, middle page spread. It was a good one, I, really good. But now, I say that to say this. When we bless, when we sow a seed, you know this, and I, 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 I can always say this. I've watched Dr. Bakary for years. I told him when I grew up, I want to be like him. I'm still trying to grow up. Since the 80s, he's traveled first class. He's been a father to me. He's been a mentor to me. I'm trying to get to that stage. He used to travel to Amsterdam to buy pampas for his daughter. Was it? You came to Amsterdam. London. You, came to, you didn't even stop at Amsterdam. You came straight to London. Every two weeks, he bought pampas, came to London to buy pampas for his daughter. Then he'll take the pampas back to Nigeria. I mean, how many of you know that was quite a life? <laughs> you know, who does that? <laughs> There's a lot more. When I write his memoirs, there are things I would like to say. He'll write it himself. He'll write his memoirs. Anything missing, I'll add. Uh, because when I heard, but I understood something more. You know, I told you, I think it was in church, when I told you about his, did I tell you about his, his father? Was it your father or your grandfather? When they were cooking yam. It was his father. His father would cook yam. Do you know what they used to burn the yam? To cook the yam. Sir? Currency. So when they're boiling the yam, they will, <laughs> not firewood, they would use currency. <laughs> That's why he sits like this. His father would use currency to cook, cook yam. This manifestations. No, I, 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 there, there are reasons I say all these things, not because we're taking an offering. But there is something about drinking from a well and the lineage. Do not ignore your spiritual lineage. Do not forsake the lineage your fathers have given you. When God places you in a place, he knows why. Whether you drink from the well, spiritual or biological, make sure you drink from pure things that will strengthen your destiny in the years to come. I have seen Pastor Bakri walk and follow God. I am determined to believe that everything that the Lord has told him, it shall come to pass. And I continue to stand by and with and in prayer for the fullness of the manifestation of all that the Lord has said in Jesus' name. Folks, we are... I, I gave you time as I was talking. It was because you were writing your offerings. So I'm hoping offerings, uh, you finished writing. Everybody ready? Okay. We're going to wrap up service. Please be upstanding. 
Is there anything I've left up over? Anybody here for the first? Yes, sir. I did not acknowledge our children, Pastor, Pastor Remy. Oh, yes. I, I, Pastor Remy, children, Pastor from Citadel, please make her feel welcome. Good to have you with us. You will be having lunch with us downstairs, ma'am. We'll be, we'll be manifesting some serious food. And it's good to have my brother's children, their dossiers here. Guys, we'll see downstairs, right? Uh-huh. Cool. Okay. Right. We're about to pray and be released. Who are anything I've missed out on? Everybody, anybody here for the first time? No, no, no. You're all welcome. Any who? And I hope you are blessed. Yeah? Look at your neighbor and say, go and manifest God. Go and tell your neighbor, say, go and manifest God. Say, you're part of God's fragrance. Go and diffuse the knowledge of God. Go and tell him, say, go and diffuse the knowledge of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for the challenge. Thank you for the refreshing what a word what a word what a word you brought to us i pray we don't leave this place the same way i pray that where we go god that there's a sweet aroma of your presence in the name of jesus that people will know that we've been with jesus people will know we've been with god and because of who we are because of who you are in us almighty god let it be that lord god lives will be changed men and women will come to the manifestation of the revelation of the lord jesus christ and that father god people will begin to see that lord just like you said that in the last days the knowledge of the glory of the lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea make us part of that end time prophetic word in the name of jesus and you said father in the last days the mountain of the house of the lord will be exalted above every other hill and nations shall flow to it and they will say come let us go into the house of the lord for the lord god father the bible says for out of zion will go forth the law it is our manifest desire it is our prayer it is our, our outcry that we show forth the glory of god in all the things that we think in all the things that we say and in all the things that we do be glorified in jesus name we pray amen and together we say may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen and surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen amen praise the lord god bless you don't forget our fasting starts on saturday first three days of the month and we're fasting tomorrow first three days of the month don't forget that amen chinadu do you want to take them downstairs okay and tam help me direct them downstairs